In this video, I will show you how to use the properties of parallelograms to find a lot of missing angles and sides. Uh, we will also be using the properties of some special angle pairs. So in a problem like this, where they give us a few angles inside of a parallelogram, and then they're asking us to find a bunch of other angles, um, I think the best thing to do is just to find all of the stuff you can. Don't worry about problem one, two, three, four. Just let's fill in everything we can and then let's look back and see what we have. So for example, when I look at this problem and I see the 117, uh, we have vertical angles right here, right? So we see this big old X. So these angles here and here are vertical angles and vertical angles are always gonna be equal. So we know that uh, angle E here, well, this angle is going to be 117 degrees. So I say we definitely fill that in. Uh, next, linear pair. Uh, for example, when you look at uh, this straight line right here. Now, a straight line forms 180 degrees total. So the angle on the left and the angle on the right, these have to add up to 180 degrees. So I can subtract from 180 and uh, see what the other angle is gonna be. All right, so 180 minus uh, 117. So that's 63. So we know that the other angle right here is going to be 63 degrees. All right, linear pair. Um, now we have another vertical angle situation. This 63 uh, with this angle right here, these are vertical angles, so that means this is also going to be 63 degrees. Okay, so there are a couple other things that we can do. Um, we know that all of the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. So if I see any triangle where I have two angles given, I should be able to find the third angle at that point. So here I see the 80 and the 63, so I should be able to find the third angle uh, by subtracting from 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract 80 and 63, that leaves me with 37. So that means this missing angle right here is going to be 37 degrees. All right, um, that's a similar situation that I have going on up here. Here I have two angles given, so I should be able to find the third angle. All right, so if I take 180 minus 117 uh, minus 23, that leaves 40. So that means this missing angle right here is going to be 40 degrees. Now there's one other secret, secret weapon that we have not used yet. Um, and that is alternate interior angles. Let me remind you what that is. Uh, when I have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, um, they, there will be some alternate interior angles. So um, if you look at this angle right here and this angle right here, they are alternate interior angles. And if the lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this was uh, 30 degrees, then this would also be 30 degrees. Now, notice that an alternate interior angle forms um, <clears throat> a Z shape. 
a pair of alternate interior angles will form a Z shape. So if I draw a Z right here, um, the corners of the Z are alternate interior angles. So um, I can use that to my advantage. Watch this. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so for example, um, because this is a parallelogram, I know that these two sides are parallel. Okay, now if I draw the diagonal as well, you can see the Z that is formed. The corners of the Z are alternate interior angles. So they should be congruent. So um, the 23 that you see, okay, so you see the 23 right here in one corner of the Z um, should be congruent with the other corner of the Z. So this should also be 23 degrees. Okay, um, let's see. Can I flip it the other way? All right, what if I draw the other diagonal? Will that help me? Okay, so I drew the diagonal this way before. This time I'm going to draw the diagonal this way. So it's sort of like a backwards Z. Um, but still, the corners of the Z are alternate interior angles. So that 40 degrees in one corner should match this corner uh, will also be 40 degrees. So this will be 40 degrees right here. Now, I keep saying Z shape and backwards Z shape, but I would like you to understand that you can also do this as an N shape. Let me show you what I mean. If I use these sides right here, boom, and boom. Okay, and now, uh, so those are parallel because this is a parallelogram. So if I draw this diagonal, um, then this end shape still represents alternate interior angles, and the corners of the end will be congruent. So if this is 80 up here, then I should have another 80 down below. So this should be also 80 right here. The two corners of the N, alternate interior angles, they are congruent. Um, okay, and one more time, if I turn the diagonal the other way, All right, let's use this diagonal now. All right, again, the corners are alternate interior angles um, and they will be congruent. So you see the 37 degrees right here in one corner. So that means the other corner should also be 37 degrees. So in that way, we are able to find uh, from a few angles, all of the missing angles in this parallelogram. So armed with all of these angles, I should be able to answer any question they want to throw at me. So let's see, what is the measure of angle AED? Okay, AED, uh, just to be clear, AED is this angle right here. This is AED. And that is 63. I'll put them underneath. So this will be 63 degrees. How about angle AEB? All right, angle AEB is this angle right here. That's 117 degrees. What about angle BDC? Okay, so angle B, 
D C is this angle right here. That is 23 degrees. All right, how about angle A D B? Okay, so A D B. That's 37 degrees. All right. Find each indicated measure. Okay, so um, let's practice this again. Um, I would recommend that you pause the video right now and try to do this problem by yourself. All right, fill in everything you can, answer as many questions as you can, and then hit play. All right, well, I'm going to assume that you did that and move on. So, um, in a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are going to be congruent. So, I see that we have 125 degrees right here in angle P. So, that means that this angle over here will be 125 degrees. Okay, they are opposite angles. Um, what else can I do? Uh, let's use the fact that the sum of the angles in a triangle are 180. So I see that I have two angles in the triangle. So um, I should be able to find the third angle by subtracting from 180. So let's see, 180 minus 125. Minus 37 is 18. Okay, so that means that this angle is 18 degrees right down here. All right, I think it's time for alternate interior angles, my N's and my Z's. So, for example, okay, if I use these, if, if I draw the Z right here. All right, the corners of the Z will be alternate interior angles. So uh, I see the 37 in one corner, so that means I should have 37 in the other corner. All right, um, now I should be able to do that again uh, with maybe, maybe it's going to be an N this time. Okay, let's see. So watch this. I see that I have this 18 in the corner. That's my target. So I'm sort of tracing the, eight, the 18. Okay, and then I make like a backwards N out of it. So, the corners of the backwards N are uh, alternate interior angles. So, um, so if this corner is 18, that means that this corner is also 18. All right, I think that's all, uh, I think we filled in all of the angles in this picture. So it's time to answer the questions. Okay, um, let's talk about the measure of angle M O N. Okay, M O N would be like this M O N. That is 37 degrees. What about angle MOP? M O P would be this angle right here. That's the 18. What about angle PON? So P O 
N. Well, angle PON is the combination of both of these angles. So I'm going to have to add these together. So that is going to be 55. How about angle OMN? All right, so from O to M to N. So that is 18. All right, and then angle N. Well, that's clearly 125 degrees.